G'day! Today we're playing a bit more Flycorp in my string challenge. One funny thing that was was questioned in one of my previous videos, which I, I did wonder if, or I do wonder if anyone else ever, <laughs> ever wonders. Someone asked the question, why do I say today twice when I start a video? I, I certainly didn't know what they meant. Uh, but yeah, it was pointed out that no, I'm saying g'day, the greeting, and then today, as in what we're about to do. That's a funny little one that I realized that definitely g'day isn't something that, that people would hear all over the world, so... That was a fun little one. Anyway, today we are going to definitely take Finland. And, uh, and then we will reassess what we want to take after that. I do feel... The good news is that we're about to hit a few really small countries, so most likely it's going to be Estonia, and I look forward to taking... We'll probably be able to take three guys and the one after that. Because I do think that there's a fair bit more of Norway and Sweden to go. Uh, on Norway and Sweden as well. Um, I did attribute a few things Swedish to Norway in the last video. Um, the, the galaxy that I said runs all the way up the country. That's not up Norway, that's up Sweden. And Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, that's not Norwegian. That's Swedish as well. So apologies, Swedes. All the things I was saying that I know about Norway, I actually know about Sweden. Finland. What do I know about Finland? Interestingly, I think the thing that I <laughs> most associate with Finland is my brother um, at one point told me that he'd gotten obsessed with reading memes that came from Finland. Um, and he said they're really funny because so many Finnish memes are about how they stopped Russia in World War II. Um, I think the Russians... At the point where the Russians went, because uh, what they were on the side of Germany, or am I mixing this up with World War One? One of them, Russia was fighting on one side, and then they quickly pivoted and ended up fighting on the other. I think it was two in World War Two. They they actually tried to make a push. They pushed into Poland and and helped Germany take that. And I think they went for Finland, and then they lost, and then they regrouped, and eventually they they saw which side they were fighting on. They went against Germany, I think. Anyway, so you can see memes in, um, I, the only meme I remember he sent me was, it was, um, uh, roadblocks, a, a road, a Lund, a roadblock in England, and it was a picture of, like, a speed bump, a roadblock in America, and it was a picture of a speed bump, a roadblock in Russia, and it was a picture of the Finnish flag. That's, that's the one that's burnt into my brain. Uh, so the Finns are very proud of their stopping Russianness. That's the only thing I know about them, and where Helsinki is. I, uh, I was once making a, yeah, designing a trip, because uh, I'm not sure if I've said this before, one thing I absolutely love uh, in sightseeing, I am an absolute junkie for statues, big statues, cool, and we've now also had the patch go that means we get pictures when we get our announcements too. Um, I, yeah, I... So I, I've seen the Statue of Liberty, I've seen Mount Rushmore, I've seen Crazy Horse Monument. Um, what else have I seen around the world? Uh, some of the really big Buddhist statues in Tibet. Uh, the big one in Hong Kong. So with that in mind, one of the places that I really want to go is uh, Volgograd in Russia. Because I want to see the, I'd love to see the Motherland Calls statue. Uh, which would be about here. And so after having done my, my Asia trip, I wanted to do a two-week trip the following year. And I thought, all right, well, what I could do is Russia. So this, uh, so keeping in mind, this was 2019. This isn't right now. So in terms of where I was traveling. So what I wanted to do was Volgograd. Take a train from Volgograd to Moscow. A few days in Moscow, St. Petersburg. Then go from St. Petersburg into Finland. Helsinki, which is why I know where Helsinki is. Take a boat across into Estonia, through Latvia, through Lith Lithuania. I think it was possible to either go through Belarus or it was fly over Belarus. I can't remember why I didn't have it. I, I think the red flag that I was sparking for Belarus was the fact that if you go to Google Maps, the um, Street View isn't on there. And it does make me wonder why, why could Street View comfortably go through all these countries and not go through that? Although I think Germany also doesn't have Street View, so it could also mean nothing. Um, but the stuff I was looking at, I think, had me flying over Belarus, go to Ukraine, and go to uh, Chernobyl. I thought it was, a really, it was something that I think would be really cool to do. I've had all the kids I intend on having in my life, so come at me. 
uh, potential radiation. Although I think it's pretty safe at this point anyway. Um, but yeah, anyway, I looked at that and I got quoted for the cost of it and it was expensive. I mean, it did make me realize the difference between traveling through Asia and, <laughs> and traveling through Europe. So instead, I ended up just going, all right, well, let's st stop trying to like... Um, the trip that I've done here, I hand... What I did is I went to... Um, uh, Intrepid was the, the company that I used and I wholeheartedly recommend Intrepid. But what I did is you can customize your own trips with Intrepid. So what I did is I actually read a whole bunch of trips of around where I wanted to go. So I want to go to Tibet. So what trips do, does Intrepid actually do in Tibet? I want to go to Mongolia. What trips do they actually do in Mongolia? And basically what I did is I then submitted to them, all right, I want to take day two and three from this Mongolian trip and these days from this trip. So basically what I did is I just took all of these trips that they already had and Frankensteined particular days together. Because So everything that I was asking them to do, I knew that they already did. And so that's the way that I approached that. And so when I um, then went for this, I was attempting to do the same thing. Although I, I'm not sure if all of it was in there, but basically pitched that and they said, um, is the price and it was almost, I think it was twice as much as the cost of what I'd done in Asia um, and and it was half the amount of time this was a two-week trip that was a four-week trip and that was half the cost of the two weeks of this twice the length so in the end I went oh you know what maybe what I'll do is I'll do a trip instead that is just an island and uh and take it easy um, something that I don't have to plan an island that I feel like I can see in in two weeks and so that's where instead I shifted that trip to just being Madagascar, which was also great in its own right. And it was the first time I'd been to Africa and opened my eyes to what an incredible continent this was and gave me the sense that there is so much more of this continent I now could potentially see. So, um, so yeah, definitely. And then, of course, what next happened was the world shut down. So um, I uh, didn't get to go anywhere else. And, well, I've been to Hong Kong since, I think, is the only thing. Since then, I eagerly await uh, my next next adventure. Well, we are still getting cities open up here, I reckon. And it does not look like we're getting them up here. So let's just double check where else in the world we're getting these cities. They're going to be arriving at the moment in Brazil. It's going to be tricky. One other good thing is that they... Um, in the latest patch notes, I think the other thing that they changed is that thing you, would, you occasionally used to see in my videos where, say, a city would go X and it would cut off the actual routes to it. That's gone. Um, so no longer will um, I lose routes if a city gets um, the city gets cut off. Oh, it looks like we've got a few more Canadian cities coming in. All right, let's go that way, and then we'll... No, that doesn't make sense. We'll keep that one. Get rid of that one. I'll get rid of that one. Bounce that way. Voila. I've got Liverpool too. I wonder what suddenly inspired the um uh, the shift in Canadian cities coming back. I mean, it must. I mean, I would have thought that it was because there was no more cities in. Um, say Finland and Norway and that, but I mean, there's no, there's no reason to suggest, like, to assume that that. I and mean, really, it can give me any um, cities anywhere at once. Another one. 
know this one as well, Canadian, Canadians out there. Is this pronounced Regina or Regina? I would read it as Regina, but I do know the song, um, The Last Saskatchewan Pirate. And in that they say Regina. And so for that reason, is this pronounced Regina? Or is it just a weird pronunciation in that song? Alright, doesn't look like we've got any more cities showing up over there. Good to see, yeah, we've got a lot more Finnish ones. Now, what do we want to do here? What we can actually do, I think, is get rid of that. And that's a cute picture, that one. And we'll get rid of that. And instead, we'll make this connection. Then what we'll do is go sell that, have him bounce to those ones. And no, let's get rid of that one. We'll have him swing back to that guy. Sorry, I should be attempting to pronounce his city name, shouldn't I? All right, let's go for some uh, some reference points. Now, my probably biggest, trickiest thing here is that if we're just looking in this part of the world, the only uh, Swedish city that I actually know by name is Stockholm. And that doesn't really open up too much in the way of pronunciations of anything. Um, and Helsinki. And I mean, even those there, I, I very much assume that those are um, English, Englishized sort of pronunciations of these city names that we've just sort of been saying them for so long that we've appropriated a, a very, like those hard letters that, that you use in English. Rovanimi. Rovanimi. Sorting Sorting Kyla Sorting Kyla Now Sweden sorry not Sweden Finland Finland is another country I don't know too much about and I don't know too much about the population of uh Sweden Finland, sorry. We're talking about Finland. Who had the, um... Which one of these countries was the one that had the... That awful, uh... Massacre on the island? I want to say Finland. done a good job of both um, making the the journey down through Finland not too bad from from all the way up here in um, Norway but almost to the point that it doesn't much matter where any Finnish cities show up even like sort of out there or even out here there's borders that can uh, can tolerate it we will give it a a few more minutes, so to see if anyone else wants to show up over there. Let's have a look at some cities that are um, struggling.
Oh, that's a city out in the middle of nowhere. Almost a perfect circle just around him. Now, I think that I'm going to go for up here because these are already the longer sort of journeys. So I think it sort of matches the, the distances that are being traveled up here better than the very short routes down here and the very short routes in here. Now, similar to the guy directly above him, I think that both of these lines should benefit from a, say, 300 seater. That guy can have the 300 seater, and that guy can enjoy a 500 seater, I suppose. He's a little bit longer. Algorithm staying near permanent road here. And I mean, that's red planes heading back and forth. Oh, they're, maybe they're getting taken care of it. Looks like this guy's possibly more constantly shifting guys towards it. Although he's just had a green journey both directions. So maybe the system's still a little bit broken. I mean, it's saying there's 4,000 people there and with only 150 the maximum amount. I mean, that's very possible because there's so many cities that anyone could possibly be traveling to. There could be an insane scattering of, of cities that uh, we've got. Get Estonia. And this will be one where we've actually got a... Um, a capital to capital connection, which will make it our... Second? Third. Well, we've got... Brussels to Luxembourg is a, is a direct capital to capital flight. And I thought there was one somewhere down here. Maybe it was those two. And they've, they've now gone. Now, what do I know about Estonia? Um, oh, that really flew me to the middle of Russia. <laughs> the... I... I watched um, what Tenant and then was so fascinated by trying to get my head around the time stuff in Tenant that I watched a few videos like explaining it and um, and from that I learnt that the car chase was in in the place in Talon because it kept being referred to as the Talon uh, car chase scene which I Tenet was a weird movie that, like, I, I saw so much stuff saying you need to see this multiple times to, like, this is a confusing movie. And I reckon hearing that so much, I was like, alright, no, I'm I'm going to go in this thing completely focusing on this to, to make sure that I don't have to watch it twice. Um, I generally find with Christopher Nolan films, they're worth going to see in the cinema because you will... Um, because generally you only want to watch them once. Stuff like Interstellar, Inception, they're such uh, 1917. They're such big films that they're they're really heavy to watch. So it's not really like ah, oh, you know what? I feel like just relaxing and watching Interstellar again. So um, a lot of his films, it, it takes me a long time to go back and watch. So um, for that reason, I I think that he's he, a good argument to go see it in the cinema. But I didn't see uh, Tenet in the cinema. But I paid attention to it because I knew that that's the way they generally approach his films. And I was like, no, that made sense. I got it. I, I could follow what was going on. Nothing too complicated. And then I just got into this, um, like, deep dive of just watching more and more stuff explaining the way that, um, the, like, the, the, the time worked and just sort of, like, getting even more confused about trying to make sense of it in my head. The, the thing that I, I think caught me most on that, and I realize now I'm just speaking directly to people who've, who can remember Tenet. In that car, in the Talon car chase scene, I was always, I, I just sort of assumed that what happened is when he throws the, the thing out of his car to the other car, and then he crashes, the Kenneth Branagh comes and takes it out of his car, but he doesn't. He 
he knows where that car came from and so he reports to the guys traveling the other direction where the piece is going to end up and i'm like I don't even know. I can't imagine that having the presence of mind to do that. It meant he had to know where that car came from. He recognized that as the exact car that was sitting at the wharf, which, I mean, hats off to him. But <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, but but eventually, and it, even watching all that stuff, I was like, nah, 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 you're not going to get me. I'm not going to watch it a second time. I'm, I'm satisfied with my one viewing. Um, until I watched a guy say, the reason that you should watch Tenet a second time is because when you first watch it, he you watch it with the expectation of it being a normal movie it's not and so what you have to do is you have to watch it a second time appreciating that it's not a normal movie and that you you just have to let it take you on a journey and uh and just sort of like get rid of all your assumptions and i was like all right i'll allow it and i actually did i reckon i did enjoy it more the second time and that was a, a just reason for, for watching the second time, too. Anyway, that's my tenant story, and that's all I know about Estonia. I keep thinking that I've not upgraded planes, and then I realize I've done that on purpose. It's all my little planes are flying about. Well, let's keep this good thing going. Latvia, I know little to nothing about. I think even um, planning a trip through, well, was sort of like doing my broad strokes of, of planning traveling through Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania. I don't think even Finland. I don't think I there was any must-see thing that already sits on my list for any of these four countries. There is a city somewhere in here it, it may well be in belarus so maybe belarus was on my map of somewhere to visit but there is a city there is a city somewhere that was completely wiped out in world war ii that only one person lived in the city the entire entire city i think i think it's in belarus and that seemed like something to see as a as a war memorial question really is, is Belarus actually the next country I take here? Where's my, um, because I think my plan is, is to swing from, um, swing this way. So, Poland, Czech Republic, Austria, Italy, into Tunisia, and then around, around, the uh, I don't know how to approach Russia in this one. I feel like it's going to be... But I, I don't want to cheap out it, India and China for, for having as long as they need to get as many cities as possible. Really know how to do it though. I, I did say in a previous one that I should take, I shouldn't take Russia until I've got Kazakhstan and Mongolia, and so that I can just sort of like jolt any city that comes up in Russia into any of the its neighbors. I want a city over here somewhere. If I can have. Anu connect down to there and then bounce like that into Lithuania and then through oh that's Russia there I wonder what Russia does with that little bit of land of uh cities getting missed here with my um upgrading mm. 
I mean, I can flip this the opposite direction. Oh, wow, that is, I think that's my first maxed out city. 30,000 people. That is, that is one thing I think I've said before. If I got enough money, I could, uh, in theory, upgrade the entire lot, the entire system to 30,000 for potentially long enough that, or even just, I guess, my hotspot cities to, to 30,000 till I reach a point where um, I survive for, for some time without my 30 second negative. Vil Vilnius Vil Vilnius Lithuania Nia Ni Vilnius Vilnius No, that would be L before I I don't even know how to go with this one. What does an S sound like? Siuli I. That hippie. forward to the fact that I get to, to go through all these small European countries now and swoop through and take as many more than what I've gotten to take in previous ones. Spend the rest of this one just seeing if we can make it a little bit easier and try and take care of some of these cities. This guy here, that looks like a just a break. So let's do a quick save, load, and let's try and uh, see if we can take care of some of these cities. You can see suddenly that one does drop to green. We love to see. Now we can guess. He's got the two planes already. Who's the, who's the one slowing down this connection here? Is it him? I can see that the guy... Uh, this guy has two planes on him, so we'll just give... These guys just a, a hundred seaters. Try and just shift that along slightly. Montgomery. Well, Montgomery can get an upgrade, firstly. Back in Albany. Sorry, Albany. Could be Albany. Give both those guys just 300s to because they've got a double guy just rocking just below them. So Los Angeles is actually the way that this guy's overloaded, so again, let's give him a... The thing that's great about doing the, the, the not the same size ones is it means that I don't have to worry about offsetting them because they're just going to permanently run at a different pace anyway. Still, though, 
problem here. I mean, it is all going that way. Is there three planes on this? Yeah. Alright, maybe we will. Currently carrying negative 500 passengers. See how that goes. Brandon's still the complaint here. Alright, I can see it. it's going full pace because this guy is still not um, digging out of his little ditch. That one there will give 300. Getting lots of warnings about Brandon. For Brandon really not being that, that bad off. Monterey. I mean, again, that's still south, so it is all just this um this one direction that seems to be the the issue. I don't know. Surely they've got to be winning this battle, though. Yeah, there we go. Billings. Monterey as well. So how many you got? You've got two. You've got the one. So we'll give you a 300 seater to try and offset that a little bit. Great Falls is also. A bit of a struggle, so we'll give you a 300 seater too. I mean, with these, we've really just got to wait a little bit for. But I mean, you can see the fact that this guy's yellow, so it means that there's not even enough guys to, to warrant these guys getting full going back. Nothing coming his way. Just got a thousand people waiting in Los Angeles. Waiting to go to Los Angeles, rather. He should be full now. Good. But at least we know he's not broken. Alright, let's um up that guy a little bit. He's overloaded there. Alright, so this guy looks like his issue is going going north at least. So he's got the three planes, this guy's only got the one. I mean he's completely cleared there. Toronto, so he's which way's Toronto from him? There. So that is. Uh, uh, this, this direction, let's give him the, oh, only one to 300, uh, I don't know, it's right, he'll 500, and in rebuttal we'll give him a 300, uh, so there's just a little bit of an offset there, this guy will win that battle slightly. And there we go, we've got an actual countdown. All right. You 300. I don't want to really make you any bigger. I do feel like this guy's going to... Although he just doesn't have enough passengers to, to actually try and shift it along. Now this guy, there's not too much he can do if it's to do with people going to, to over here. He's got his full max 5. But you can see that every now and then these these flights aren't maxed. This this guy's got nothing going on. Bluefields. Assume that you're the more problem length for the bigger one. St. John. Melville, it's your grief, Melville. Los Angeles. Again, it's still this side of Melville that's the problem. Give them a plane to 
carry that along. I don't really want to make it any bigger of a airport. It's already big enough. space on the map that I can drag it around by. And it's this guy. I mean, he's only a... Oh, that's going to be my problem there. He's only a 3,000 population city. Just... If these guys land at too quick succession for these guys to be picking it up, then of course they're going to gonna struggle. And it's back on the cards. What direction are you? Mexico City. So let's get him a bit more sizable. I mean the fact that we've got two guys on that is gonna make this guy struggle a little bit more. Give him a 300 seater. It feels like only time that he's gonna, well, he has some sort of problem in the middle of all this. green coming back this way might suggest that this isn't getting overloaded heading that way. I do actually probably want to keep an eye on this guy until he's opposite the other one or we'll make him full speed. So close to having this working its way down. Now this guy's getting even worse and worse. I really don't want to move this issue on to Saskatoon, but. Still losing the battle. All right, well, let's go and a 300. Let's see if that makes you win this battle a little bit more. At least we know that there's there's not the demand of guys coming back this way anywhere near as much. I assume it's him that's the problem on this one. Cheyenne. Possibly even bigger. It's a. He's got two planes going on this side of him, and he's got um, a short route on the other side. But what we're going to try and do with these is sort of more go light until that's proven wrong. And maybe on some of these routes where I went to full size jets to begin with, I, I should reel him in a bit more. All right. It's interesting that it mainly is North America. It seems like at the moment that's my. Uh, my problem. It's that one, right? Yeah. Then we'll give him a small plane. You're getting close. Alrighty. Oh, he's got two on both sides. I think that's just the size of this airport that's probably the problem. That there's just enough traffic flying both ways through it that it can... ...issue. Are there any state colleges in state college? And is a state college in state college called state college? Is a state college state college? I mean, it's Pennsylvania. So it would be Pennsylvania State College.
do want to fall on into this session, but I'm just feeling like I'm getting so close here. Let's just pick, pick up the pace and see if we can... I mean, we've sort of got my pattern now of what I'm doing to attempting to, to address these. Doesn't seem like we're closer yet. You got two green, so I assume it's the size of your that airport that's the problem. Alright. Well, it doesn't feel like getting rid of that 30 second penalty is, is completely off the table. I think that we've still got a chance here. Um, but anyway, that chance won't come today. Instead, what we have is Finland and the Baltics. Uh, any questions or comments, feel free to check them below. Until next time, catch you later. See ya.